Chapter 96 True Genius Worries After dimensional magic, it was time for the specialization lesson. Professor Naliar's course was on forced hold. The numbers of students required tier 4 spell and evaluation had far exceeded expectation. A day hadn't been enough. Floria had the rest of the morning free, while Lit and the others went to the master healer class. Once at the academy's hospital, the students discovered that Professor Vester had organized a small refreshment before officially starting the new trimester. The class had gone down from, from 34 to 28 students, and some of them had barely broke a C. Between those who had lost a friend and the ones terrified at the idea of suffering the same fate, very few were in the mood for celebration. Vester didn't seem to notice, though, and even if the report cards were supposed to be a secret, it wasn't hard to guess grades based on how he treated the different students. He devoted a lot of attention to Quilla and Lit, arousing the envy of many. Those who, like Professor Rudd, were biased against commoners' bloodlines would have given an arm and a leg to get the opportunity to teach them a lesson. Yet, they were well aware that because of the ballots, the best they could do was get demoted from unsuccessful mages to expelled ones. Not to mention that instead of being reprimanded, Bastor had received an award for beating unruly students during the mock exam. Keep working hard, my dear pupils, and remember what I said at the beginning of our lessons. After the second trimester, the class will be halved. We will be lucky if 20 of you manage to actually graduate as healers. From how he was looking at the anger students, he had got a taste for it. During the lessons, Lit Group had finally the opportunity to take the lead in delicate procedures like regrowing lost limbs and organs. Previously, the three men team one responsible for the regeneration and the other for keeping the patient's vital stable, were both comprised of two professors and only one student. Now, the balance had shifted and only a professor remained in each team. When Quilla and Lit weren't in charge of one of the teams, Professor Vaster would always put them in as second in command, ready to take over the procedure in case anything went wrong. He took lead a few patients to understand all the quirks and risk of generating a lost limb. The tier 4 spell couldn't be handled by just mindlessly pumping mana or everyone could have done it even without a specialization. The whole process revolved around the delicate balance between the two groups of healers with the patients as their fulcrum. The mage leading the regeneration had to keep the spell active while giving the patient's body time to rejuvenate. With two short intervals between mana pulses, most of their effectiveness would be lost, making the procedure longer and more difficult. Also, it would put a great Great stress on the patient's body with the risk that the new limb would be defective. One had to give the vital support team the time to reintegrate the patient's lost vitality during the process, his metabolism as little as possible. The second team acted as a life force, but the drip rate had to be manually adjusted depending on the circumstances. Too fast, and the energy would be lost, just giving a sensation of euphoria. Too slow, and the massive drain caused by the regeneration could kill or permanently incapacitate it. The team had to coordinate between themselves the first sending mana pulses spaced enough to allow the life force infusion to be effective. The second adjusting the flow whenever was necessary to avoid the regenerative spell to be interrupted by a too prolonged pause. Lit and Quilla quickly mastered both roles receiving many compliments from the medical staff and 30 points from Professor Vaster. They were the only ones that, despite occasionally losing control of the spell, would manage to fix things on their own without needing a professor to take over. In Lit's case, he did it on purpose. 
thanks to invigoration, he was capable of having complete awareness of the patient status. Lid could understand with a glance when more life force was necessary or not, instructing the other team to speed up or slow down and time the regenerating pulse so that the next one would arrive only when the previous was already losing effectiveness. Yet, he had to make mistakes. Achieving perfection from day one would have been too eye-catching. Even with the help of True Magic, the task took a heavy toll on both his mind and body. The stress of handling a human life put a huge pressure on everyone. The patients were real person and not test dummies anymore. Because of the long pre-operation phase, the student had been forced to spend time with them during the previous semester, to talk and know them personally. It was impossible to consider their life just a number in their success-failure ratio. And while it used invigoration, the others could only rely on their magic sensitivity, listening to the patient's pulse and keeping an eye on their complexion and pain. It was something incredibly hard. Lid had no idea how others could manage to do it. The scariest thing was that despite all that, Willa was just a few steps behind him. Even if stuck with fake magic, she was able to absorb like a sponge all the notions and suggestions Professor Buster gave them, managing to get in tune with every patient. Lid would have never been capable of doing that, at least not that fast. He learned by experience, little by little with every procedure, using invigoration as a guiding hand whenever he had a doubt. The more time they spent together, the more aware he was that it was only a matter of time before she revealed herself to be a genius. Her monocore was already on par with Litz. I can only pat myself in the back for taking care of her for all this time. If necessity ever arises, she can become an invaluable asset. If she really is an S-class healer, she will leave me of all the unnecessary attentions, avoiding for a simple A-class talent like me to be pressured. Besides, it's not like she can treat in my position. With my knowledge of biochemistry, biology and anatomy, I will always be the top of the theoretical field. Who'd ever guess that all the extra credits seminars for the college would pay off like this? All the other students didn't know if to laugh or cry at their helplessness, envy and shame fought in their hearts, like two lions tumbling down a cliff. No matter which one would win, the result would be the same. Even Uriel and Freya felt a tinge of jealousy while comparing themselves to them, but most of all, they were proud and happy for their friends. Lid had helped them countless times in the past, never asking anything in return. What had started as a simple business relationship had evolved in Hannah's friendship. As for Quilla, they could never resent her. At first... Uriel approached her just out of curiosity. He had considered her like a pet, someone talented that would be easy to manipulate due to her childish naivety and poor background. But Quilla's growth as a person and mage had stunned him, leading Uriel to shed his prejudice and accept her as a peer. Now, after three months together, he felt deeply ashamed of his initial attitude towards her and was trying to make amends. Freya, instead, liked to think of her as her little sister she had always wanted. Quilla was honest and had a big heart. Their friendship had developed naturally from their first meeting, both suffering from the constant harassing from the other students. Quilla's body had started to change due to the rapid growth induced by the tonic. Freya had helped her manage her first period, teaching her everything about what being a woman meant, becoming her confidant. When Freya had hit a wall during the healer specialization, Willa had volunteered to help her. They started studying together, and whatever difficulty Freya encountered, Quilla had been always there for her. She had never talked about her private lessons to anyone, not even trying to impress Lit, from whom Freya knew she had a huge crush. Quilla's humble and gentle nature had moved her beyond what words could express. Priya had found in a stranger something that even her own family had always denied her. 
She was ready to do anything for her little adoptive sister. As for Quilla, she was thankful for Tear for Magic being so hard. Her work as a healer with the constant pressure of having another human being in her hands was the only thing forcing her unruly heart to rest. When they had first met, Uriel was like a prince charming out of the fairy tales that she had read as a kid. He was noble, powerful, rich handsome, smart, and gentle, almost too good to be true. Lead, on the other side, had been more like a demon lord, cold, scary, brush, talking to everyone like they were ants, glaring with soul-chilling dead eyes. But after the two days, something had changed. She had noticed how indifferent Uriel actually was, sometimes even forgetting about her existence. Freya was the one actually caring for her, while it was complicated. When the first magic private lesson had started, he had lost most of his edge, becoming more supportive and helpful than Professor Trask himself. He was the only one now staring at her for the amount of food she gobbled every day. On the contrary, he would even encourage her to eat more and help her keep her diet balanced. Lid would always worry for her safety, encouraging her to pick up a ballot, even defending her when she still had to get her own. In the last months, whenever students tried to casually bump into her, Lid would switch places with Quilla. No matter how big the other guy was, Lid would remain immovable like a mountain, while the other would fall on his ass wincing in pain. After a month from their first meeting, when she had her first period, he had been the one noticing her distress, relieving the pain with one of his personal spells and bringing her to Freya to give her some help. As a healer, he was bound to know everything about it too, yet he had the sensitivity to avoid embarrassing her, letting another woman help her face that awkward situation. It was after that moment that something inside Quilla had changed. Whenever she saw him, she would get butterflies in her stomach, her mouth would go dry. Each time they spoke, she needed sheer willpower to not speak fast or giggle at everything he said. Over time, he had become gentler and kinder, helping them whenever he could during the private lessons, answering all their questions and giving them pointers. She started to admire his cold attitude towards strangers, not giving a damn about what they thought or said, having eyes only for his friends. Lid soon revealed to be wise beyond his years, knowing many things and having anecdotes about almost everything. Sometimes, when they walk side by side, their hands casually touched. In those moments, she felt really hard to resist the compulsion to take his hand, to feel his warmth. Other times, when she was alone in her room, her mind would go crazy with fantasies and delusions, making her feeling hot and fuzzy in the strangest places. When Quilla talked about that to Freya, she told her that it was perfectly normal, even though she blushed listening to the question. When Freya explained what it meant, Quilla thought she would die of embarrassment. Luckily, there were just the two of them, and she knew that she could trust her friend. Over time, she had learned to manage her feelings, mostly because she was too scared to do anything about them, except that towards Professor Nelliar, Lid seemed to be completely uninterested in girls. Quilla was conscious that even if thanks to the tonic she was now 1.5 meters tall, she was nothing special. Her figure was still undeveloped and very childish. She lacked Freya's curves, or Floria's innate charisma. The only thing she could do was stay strong and hope for her feelings to fade away.